All a fantasy, the shadow people. Welcome to the Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to a series of radio dramas dedicated to the supernatural, the unusual, the unknown. Come with me, my friends. We shall descend into the world of the unknown, forbidden. Down to the depths of the veil is lifted. The supernatural reigns as king. Come with me and listen to the tale of the shadow people. David, Elaine, have you been? I mean, have you? Seen anything else since you spoke to me last? Lay, no, I haven't. Ever since Mother died, nothing's happened. David, well, I only hope that. Mr. Davis, blood curling death scream. Elaine, what's that? David, it's come from upstairs. Come on. Elaine, worried explanation. Oh. They hurried footsteps upstairs. Elaine, you don't think... David, I don't know what to think. I only hope that. Lane, oh David. David, if anything happened to him. Footsteps from the stairs to the door. David, we'll see in a moment. Lane, there's no light in his room. David, you wait here, the lane. David's footsteps stride into room. David, where's the light? Lane, over to your left. David's footsteps to light switch. Click of switch on. Click. Of switch off. David's footsteps return slowly to Elaine. Elaine, David, what's wrong? Why didn't you leave the light on? David, your father's dead, Elaine. Shadow, hushed, evil laugh. <laughs> it just... David, somewhere along the line of your life, you meet them, you come to contact with the shadow people. David, when we did our first, we did we first discuss it. Oh yes, Brian and Lane. I. It was my point in my apartment. There's only one light on in the entire place. Elaine, startled shriek. Brian, what's wrong? David. Elaine, where's what's the matter? Elaine. Oh, it's silly, I know, but I thought I saw something in the doorway over there. David, where? Elaine, over there, right over there. David, footsteps. Elaine, where are you going, David? David, over to the archway, just to let you know there's nothing there. David's footsteps stop, click, of light switch on. Brian, there you see, Elaine, nothing wrong, nothing at all. David, are you satisfied there's no one else there, here but us? Lane, yes, I... Oh, I'm sorry, but I just thought that I did... Click of light switch off. Lane, leave the overhead lights on. David, I'm sorry, I thought that. Lane, put them back on, David, please. David, all right, Lane. Click of light switch on. David puts it slowly to turn. Brian, well, what's bothering you, sis? Elaine, I don't know, it's just that... I don't know. David, tell us about it, Elaine. Tell us what's bothering you. Elaine, you promised that you won't laugh at me. David, of course not. Elaine, Brian. Brian, well, Elaine, it's, I'm your brother. Is something troubling you? I'd like to know about it. Elaine, all right then. The reason I was so upset so, 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 was the fact that I saw someone or something standing in the archway. Brian, but Elaine, David showed you there was no one else in here. When the lights are put on, you saw for yourself that we are alone. Elaine, I'm not talking about some about something you you can see in the light of Brian. I'm not talking about a human being. Brian and that's it's what's it all about, Elaine? Elaine, in the darkness. I I saw something that can't be seen in a lighted area. I've seen it several times before. Brian you sure you're not imagining this, Elaine? Elaine, oh, I don't have the good of imagination, Brian. David, how long have you have you have you seen this thing, Elaine? Elaine, well, it started about six weeks ago when Detroit on business. Brian, Mum, and David were in vacation. I was in my house by myself in the library. Elaine, there was only the light on. I sat in a chair beneath it, reading. Several times I thought that something was watching me. I felt there was someone in the room with me, standing right in back of me. 
every so often I glanced back over my shoulder, but there seemed to be nothing there. And then, then I thought I heard someone whispering. I wasn't sure, but then I heard it again. I got up, frightened. You know that, but not in the hallway. It was only it was entirely black. Luckily, I was near a light switch. I looked back over my shoulder and... I saw this huge hulking shape for the first time. I heard a voice, or rather a whisper of a voice. I couldn't distinguish the words, but a dark shape seemed to be moving towards me. My hand was on the light switch. I turned it on. A minute, the light flooded the hallway. Lane, the shape was gone. Lane, there's nothing there. I was alone again. As long as there's light, I know it can't hurt me. I know it can't reach me, Brian. Well, you might have imagined it, you know. Elaine, you, oh, of course that's possible. But I'm sure I didn't. I was, it was so real, so real in the shape of the darkness. is the very essence of evil itself. David, there was an old man I knew of, a Dr. Hesselus. I've heard that you knew quite a good deal about the supposed supernatural manifestations that take a place in the world. I went to him to see if he knew anything that might explain the events the story Elaine had told us. Woman, yes, my good sir, what do you wish? David, I wish I have an appointment with Dr. Hesselus. Woman, oh yes, yes, we mentioned, you mentioned something about it. You are Mr. Drake? David, yes. Woman, if you come inside... David, thank you. David footsteps in. Door closes. Woman, Dr. Hesselus is in the study. Please come with me. There are footsteps down the hallway to study. Woman, Doctor, a visitor for you. Hesselus. Yes, bring him in. There are footsteps in the study. Hesselus, you may go now. Woman, yes, Doctor. Woman, footsteps depart. Hesselus, Dr. Mr. Drake? David, yes. Esther, sit down, please. In that chair over there. David, thank you, sir. David moves to a chair and sits. Hester, now, what is the nature of your visit to me? David, well, I understand, Dr. Hester, your great knowledge of the supernatural manifestations which occurred on the earth. Hester, great knowledge, Mr. Drake? No, hardly that. I have only scratched the surface of my very years of study. Perhaps I can help you. And again, perhaps I cannot. David, well, I'll tell you a story. Hesus, by all means, by your good sir. David, right now. Now this, now this didn't happen to me, Doctor, but to my friend Nancy. It seems about six weeks ago she was alone. David, and then the light was on, the dark form appeared, disappeared. That's the story, sir, as much as it as I can remember. Hesus, hmm, I see it's a strange chill you tell. David, I'm fully aware of that, Doctor Hesus. Yes, you say she seemed to hear whispered voices? David, yes. What? That's what she says. Hesus, I see. A moment, please. Hesus rises, walks off. Hesus, I have a book on my files. Oh, yes, here it is. I believe this is the one. Yes. Hesus footsteps return. He sits and flits through the pages of the book. Hesus, perhaps I may be able to help you after all. Let me see. This is a very ancient book, Mr. Drake. I seem to remember... Yes, here is the account of a happening such as you relate. You shall read, live on earth. We shall live on earth, and they shall not see us. Yes, it had been foretold by the ruler of the darkness. Shadow. And they shall not see us. Yes, they have been foretold by the ruler of the darkness. They who live by day, retire to sleep by night, shall never know we walk with them that we watch them, for we wait for our chance. Only in night will they see us, for in daylight we are not seen. Only in night which darkness grows together and forms the shadow people are shaped from the blackness. They will know of us. Hasius will know of us, and they will know that we are the companions, for we are the shadow people. Book set down on desk. Hasius I knew I had read something similar. The story you told me, Dr. Mr. Drake. David, Dr. Hesus, what can we do? A few paces flip briefly. 
I says, well, give me a little time. Let me see if I can find any more reference to these people of the darkness. One more thing, Mr. Drake. David, yes. I says, be sure your friends is Nancy is never left alone at night. Be sure there is some living thing, animal, human, which comforts her every second of the night. But she is in danger, Mr. Drake. A terrible danger. David, that night, the night of the day I seen at Essex, Lane's mother died. She died in sleep when she failed to hear him for breakfast. Lane's father went downstairs to see what was wrong. When he entered the room, he discovered that she was dead. The family doctor couldn't explain it, for his mother had been perfect health. David, a few weeks later, I was out of the house, spending a weekend with him. I glanced at the clock on the mantel, which showed eleven. Musical clock. Medlicy chimes eleven. Mr. Da- Miss Davis. Mr. Davis, I can't understand why Brian hasn't returned from town. Lay well. I, he said he had some extra work to catch up on. He told me this morning he might be late. Mr. Davis, well, eleven o'clock. I'm going upstairs. Glad to see you came out, David. Good seeing you again. David, it's a pleasure to be here, sir. Mr. Davis, you won't stay up too late. See you both. Well, don't stay up too late. See you both in the morning. Good night. Mr. Davis' footsteps sounds during... Puts up upstairs. Elaine, good night, Dad. David, good night, Mr. Davis. Mr. David, I thought sets. <coughs> Elaine, he isn't the same, David. Ever since Mother died, he doesn't hasn't been the same. <coughs> David, I don't don't realise that until didn't realise that tonight he's changed. Elaine, I only hope it be we start living again. Ever since he died. It seems a part of him died with him. Uh, Elaine, you have been? Have you been? I mean, have you seen anything else since you spoke to me last? Elaine, no, I haven't. Ever since mother died, nothing's happened. They well, I only hope that. Mr. Davis, blood clothing stream. Elaine, what's that? David, come, it came from upstairs, come on. Elaine, worried exclamation. Oh, they hurried footsteps upstairs. Lane, you don't think, David. I don't know what to think. I only hope that. David, Lane, oh, David, oh, David, if anything happened to him, footsteps from stairs to door. David, I'll see, we'll see in a moment, Lane. There's no light in his room. David, you wait here, then, Lane. David, footsteps dried into the room. David, where's the light? Lane, over to the left. David, footsteps to switch, light switch. Click a switch and beat. Of the of light, switch off. David starts to turn slowly to Lane. Lane, David, what's wrong? Why didn't you? When did you leave the light on? David, your father is dead. Lane, shadow, hushed, evil laugh. <laughs> David, I had walked into this darkened bedroom. On the bed was Lane's father. I hadn't taken a second look for me to know he was dead. I switched off the light and walked back into the hallway to Lane. What happened? And then from the room, I come an eerie. Quiet laughter. The darkness of the room was some unknown evil power. The voice itself was unearthly. There's no substance to it. It sounded as if it came from the darkness itself. Elaine. No, no, I don't believe you. David, it's the truth, Elaine. There's nothing more I can do. We have to notify the police. Elaine, tell me. It's not the truth. David, tell me. It's not true. David, I'm sorry, Elaine. I wish I could. Your father's dead. Davis. David, after the burial, Ms. Dr. Helios got in touch with me. He said he wanted to meet both Elaine and David. David Brian, he wanted to talk to the three of us. Calling a few, night, calling a few nights later, he came out to the house. Helios, Miss Davis, will you tell me just what you saw the first manifestation? Elaine, at night, Brian was in Detroit. Mr. Helios, now Miss Davis, you've seen this operation in the company of other people. Is that correct? Elaine, yes, the night of David's apart- at David's apartment. Hesius, all right now, I'll tell you what I think. You're in deadly danger, Miss Davis. These beings want to claim you. So far, they have no success. Only darkness do they have the power. Only little by little, step by step, they've been removing the obstacles in your way. They re- to reach you, first your mother and your father, 
and your father, Miss Davis, both died in the same fashion. The darkness death struck at them. Now tell me, do you feel their presence in his room as I talk to you? Elaine, yes. Hesius, turn the lights off. Out the lights, Brian. Brian, reluctant, but Hesius, stand by the switch, if you please, Brian. If anything happens, turn the lights back on. Brian, all right. Brian Fox sets the switch. David, Dr. Hayes, I don't think... Hey, Tius, do you want us to continue working with you? Me to continue working with you? David, yes, sir. Yes, yes. All right, then. David, Brian, turn off the lights. Brian, yes, doctor. Click or switch off. Yes, yes. The room now is in darkness. Miss Davis, do you feel or see anything? Elaine, I... No, I see whispers. Yes, I do. Yes, yes. What do you... Do you see anything? Elaine. Whispers. Yes. Brian, doctor. I don't think... Yes, yes. Be quiet, you fool. Oh, no, what I'm doing. Elaine. In front of me, the darkness scurrying together, a huge, terrible shadow. Not only for you do you see us, Miss Davis, but everyone else in the room will also see the vague shapes forming themselves in the darkness. We do not want you, Dr. Hayes. The girl we want, we advise you to drop this case. Only bring down the wrath of the shadow people upon your head. The girl, we want the girl. Do not stop us. Let us take her now. Lay screams in terror. Yes, yes, the lights. Turn on the lights. Kick of the light. Switch on. Brian, footsteps return behind. Brian, there. They're gone. Yes, yes, Miss Davis. Are you all right? Lane, yes, yes, I am. Brian, David. Just as she said, the darkness, I saw the form into something too. Brian, so did I. What What are we going to do, Dr. Hayes? Hey, hey, yes. At the present moment, I don't know, but this much I do know. You must leave this house immediately. You must try to get out of the, the reach. I don't know if that is possible. I hope it is. I shall have to return to my home. I must learn if there is some manner by which we can defeat these creatures. For the moment, leave this house. Dispose of it. In any manner you may see fit, leave this house. David, we spend the night in a, spent the night in the, my apartment, three of us. The following day, David and Elaine made appointment arrangements to dispose of the house. The afternoon, Dr. Hears called me and asked what I, that I'd come to see him. Hey, yes, David, I'm glad you're here. David, anything new, Doctor? Hears, yes, I know. I realise, of course, that this spiritual manifestation is not new. They've gone on for centuries. David, no, I wasn't aware of that. Hesius, it's true, David, Doctor, that D. Masseret wrote what was supposedly be a fiction story by the manifestation, David. He called it the Hulia. However, according to the information, he on my desk, taken from an accidental actual case history. Of course, he had borrowed the story, added a few touches of something he didn't realise actually existed. David, have you found anything with which we can fight them? Has yes, it Everything depends on an answer. I see from a colleague of mine, Paris, Dr. Henry Varanhant. I just patched a telegram to him last night. David, well, has he answered by now? Has yes, there are certain things that must be done. I will take a few days, I'm afraid. We have to wait, David. There's nothing else we can do. David, in the next few days, the house was sold. Brian and Lane moved to a newer, more modern house, a few miles from my appointment apartment. As she said, it might take a few days for them to build up their power. I spent the nights at the new house. The lights were left on. I watched for any unusual occurrences. The daytime returned to my apartment, get some sleep. About four days after Lane and Brian moved into the new house, I was at home when Hedius phoned me. Phone rings. David rises up from bed. He footsteps the phone. Receiver up. David, hello. Hesius. David. David, yes, Dr. Hesius. Hesius, I hate to tell you this, David. David, what is the matter? What's wrong? Hesius, there's a step ahead of me. There was a step ahead of me, David. I've just received new word that Reynolds died or was killed. The very moment I sent the telegram to him. David, by step by step. They've outwitted us, and for they have appreci- appreciated every move we make, precipitated every move we make. Even Dr. Hedius was at loose, 
lost and what to do. Agreed to meet me in the Davis house. Lane, what do you want us to to, to see us about, Dot Hayes? Brian, did you feel find out anything more? Hayes says, I'm sorry to say I haven't. At the moment, I'm at a complete loss. I don't know what to do. David, what? But what do you want to see us about this evening? It is merely to check to see if anything else has happened. Miss Davis, seen or heard anything? Elaine, not in the same house. Not in the house, only in my dreams. Has this your dreams? Elaine, yes. I go to sleep at night. In my dreams, in the darkness, I see them. It is. Then it had grown worse. I don't much such work much worse, hoping they would not have progressed so far. Been no disturbance in this house. And now you they disturb your sleep, Miss Davis. Now you must stay awake for as long as you can. I want the three of you to move into my house. Perhaps that will give you more protection. David, that night we moved over to Hattie's house. Perhaps Elaine would have would have more protection in there. From there we were able to devise some plan of action. Some way beat those thing, beings for a few days. Things were quiet. The shadow people seemed to be withdrawn. But while I thought we might have succeeded in faltering their purpose, they no longer complained to troubled sleep. But that condition lasted for a few days only. But ten days later, they made themselves known and felt again. That night we were all in the study, and suddenly Hesius whirled around them. Hesius, Elaine, what are you looking at? Elaine, outside the house, right where the light leaves off. I see them. Brian, she's right, Dr. Hayes. I see them too. David, what can we do, Doctor? Hesius, nothing. David, what do you mean, nothing? Hesius, there's nothing we can do. Brian, we can't just... Hesius, we can't do anything, Brian. Don't you stand that? They have has at their mercy. Greatest man in my field was Henry or not. He could do nothing against them. What do you want? think we can do? Elaine, he's right, Dana, Brian. There's nothing we can do. He says, as long as the house remains lighted, just as long, just as long they will remain outside. The lights that were to shadow, hush laughter, evil laughter. <laughs> David, that sounds like Elaine. The night father was killed. The same sound. We heard the same sound. Brian, the lights. What's happened to the lights? Brian and David and Elaine murmured in surprise. He says, be quiet, please. As his foot sits on the desk, drawer opens, rummages through drawer. As his, I f- thought of this emergency. Match struck, lane, a candle. As his, that's right, Miss Davis. As long as this burns, this one candle be safe, and they cannot advance into the light. They're limited by the darkness. As long as the candle burns, they will have to remain outside its own room. Shadow around you, in every room of the house, in the darkness outside. We are around you. This time, we shall not escape. You should not escape. This time we can. We will claim you. Brian, jittery. David, take it easy, Brian. Brian, I can't stand it. I'm getting out of here. Brian, running footsteps. Elaine, Brian, come back. David, don't be a fool. I'm going out, Elaine, to Elaine. I'm going after him. Hesius, stay here. David, you can't just let him go, Hesius. He, he won't have a chance, I doubt, if he... Brian, lengthy, blood clothing, death scream. Hesius, Miss Davis, I'm afraid that your brother is dead. Lane weeps for a long moment. The rising wind blows outside, grows louder during. David, the wind, Doctor, listen to the wind. Bless is I know. Shadow, yes, Doctor, listen to the wind. You must realise by now, the three of you having a chance. You must know in their minds that we can destroy you at any moment we desire. But Doctor, yes, we have to save you, your own life. Let the others go, give them to us. Hesius, no, you'll have to take uh, uh, all of us. Shadow, shall we destroy our, shall we destroy your life? Shall we move in and in on you now? I see evil laughter. Hesius, as you wish, do you will? Do as you will. Hesius, do as you wish, do as you will. But a clash of broken window pane, noise of wind, creases. Immediately blowing fiercely in the room. Hesius, I'm sorry, David, the candle's out. Shadow in the darkness, the figures in the darkness. Shadow, we warned you, Hesius. You and the others are dead now, and we shall live on in earth. A man in the day shall not see us. They shall not. Well, no, we wait for the chance. We will talk with them. Only in the night, when the shadow of darkness grows together, 
the forms of the shadow people shaped from the darkness. Blackness, will they see us? They'll know what we are their companions. Look next to you, there in the shadows. Ha 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 ha!